the periodic table is one of the most fundamental concepts in all of chemistry. And so a lot of this will be review, but before we get onto the interesting parts about periodic table trends and orbital filling rules, we'll just go over a review of some of the basic aspects of the periodic table, just to make sure we're working from the same starting position. So the first thing you'll notice is that a lot of times when you see atoms listed, they will have two numbers attached to them. The top one will be M, the mass number, and the bottom one will be Z, the atomic number. The mass number is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, and it will be listed in atomic mass units, or AMU. One AMU is essentially a gram divided by Avogadro's number. And so what that means is, say that you're working with carbon with an AMU of 12, if you have a mole of those carbon atoms, then that will have a mass of 12 grams. So any mole of a compound has that many grams uh, that is equal to its mass in AMU. Now, the bottom number is the atomic number, or Z, and that is the number of protons. The protons are what define that particular atom or that particular element, and so the number of protons is what tells you whether something is lead or tin or hydrogen or something else. The periodic table is arranged in order of increasing atomic number. So it starts with hydrogen, which has an, one proton there, moves over to helium, and then it increases from lithium, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on throughout the entire periodic table. The next thing to realize is that the way that it is arranged allows you to figure out which orbital clouds are being filled in each area. So the area over here represents the S orbital cloud. And what that means is that the highest energy electron in an atom in this region is going to be filling an S orbital. In here, it's going to be filling a D orbital. These are the transition metals. And there are 10 electrons that can fit into any one D orbital. The P region has six, and it's very important when you add the two plus the six, that's what gets you to your octet configuration. Down here we have the F orbitals, which are only relevant for the larger atoms that might be tested in unusual ways, but are less likely to show up on one of your questions as the S, D, and P orbitals. There are certain groupings in the periodic table you should be aware of. Anything in the same row is considered in the same period. And what that means is that the electrons in that row are filling the same orbital level. And so they're, they have the same level of completed orbitals underneath that, and they are filling the same orbital energy level as you move across that row. You also have families or groups, which are the columns in the periodic table. These are relevant because a lot of the elements within a single family or group will share a lot of qualities. And the reason why is because there's a desire for all atoms to adhere to Hund's rule, which says that it would like to complete this S and P subshell to complete what is called an octet and attain a noble gas configuration with eight valence electrons in that level. If it can't do that, an atom would like to fill an entire subshell, for example, the S subshell or perhaps the D subshell. And if it cannot do that, then it would prefer to have half-filled subshells. So because of this desire for atoms to fulfill Hund's rules, a lot of atoms within the same family or group will have very, very similar qualities and be treated similarly when you're dealing with chemistry on the MCAT. The number of electrons in an atom tends to follow the number of protons. And so in an element where you have, let's say, 12 protons, you will also have 12 electrons. And they tend to follow fairly straightforward rules. You'll fill S before you fill D, before you fill P, and so on. But one thing that is somewhat difficult is that the numbers aren't always straightforward. For example, you'll notice here that the 4S level is filled before the 3D level. And so you're filling some fourth level orbital clouds before you fill third level. The best way to keep track of the order in which orbitals are filled is to draw a triangle like this, where you go from 1s, 2s, 2p, and each row down you add another orbital level until you get to f, where there is nothing beyond that. And then if you're trying to figure out what order the orbitals fill in, you simply draw diagonal lines like that. And so what you'll notice here is that 1s is filled 
first and then 2s and then you fill 2p before you fill 3s and so on and you can just continue to draw these diagonal lines filling 3d 4p and 5s and then 4d before 5p and that's a really good way to keep track of how the orbitals are filled you just draw out 1s 2s 2p and so on like I've done here and then just draw diagonal lines down and whichever one the line hits first is the one that's filled first. You can also see orbitals being filled with a long electron notation where they'll show you for example 1s and then the superscript 2 will tell you how many electrons are in that orbital level. That's another way they can identify atoms because if you know exactly how many electrons are there you can count into for example the 3d level and see which element shows up when you have say some certain number in the d orbital so just realize that if you need to you can figure out the order in which orbitals are filled by doing this and then that can also help you realize for example whether 4s is next to 3d or 4d or something like that the general rule is that by the time you get down to the d orbitals the s orbital will be a higher number than the d orbital next to it and so that's a fairly straightforward way of looking at it and that can prevent you from being tripped up when they mix up the order with the long electron notation.